Hi Russell, my name is Kitty Thatcher. I'm an English as a Second Language and History High School teacher. I'm making this video in response to your video on the Trues, which describes Australia's treatment of asylum seekers that arrive by boat. Between 2009 and 2012, I spent a lot of time in Australian detention centres. I first volunteered for seven weeks on Christmas Island, 900 kilometres northwest of Perth in the Indian Ocean teaching English and running activities for the children in prison there, back when outside volunteers were allowed in. Then from late 2009 to 2012, when I was teaching in Sydney, I visited Villawood Detention Centre, which is about 40 minutes from the Sydney Opera House. As a high school teacher, I've also had the privilege of working with a number of refugee students in Sydney who have unfortunately come through our traumatising system of mandatory detention. Some of those in my class had not yet fully been processed after a year in Australia and feared their removal to their home countries daily. While I joined an activist group in Sydney called the Refugee Action Coalition that organises protests against our mandatory detention centres, I have never spoken openly about this to the media before because I feared the repercussions. I'm now based in Chile in Santiago and I feel free to say whatever I like. I'm unable to visit the detention centres even if I wanted to. First off, thank you Russell for making this video and drawing more attention to the issue. There are a couple of things I want to address straight off the bat from what you've said. It may seem to be a minor point, but when so much of our system of mandatory detention is about the twisting of words and definitions, it seems important to get this one right. The word I want to talk about first is refugee. Fleeing a war doesn't constitute as being a refugee by the definition accepted by the UN and around the world. Surprising, I know. But if your country is at war, then that's your problem. A refugee is someone who is persecuted because of their race, their religion, their nationality, or their membership to a particular social group or political opinion. To be a refugee, the person has to be unable to return to their home country because they don't trust their own country to be able to defend them. But even using that definition, more than 90% of asylum seekers who arrived by boat were found to be genuine refugees. So why do we have this mandatory system of locking people up, which is so expensive? We don't give them an access to an education, they do not have the possibility to work or freedom of movement, and crucially, they are without a release date. The average is now 275 days for being kept in detention. Well, Russell, you mentioned it was an ideologically driven racist policy. They're not white for the most part, and they don't speak Australian, and on the surface it may appear to be just that. But what cannot and must not be forgotten at our peril are the economic reasons behind mandatory detention. Not economic for Australia. Indeed, an increase in migrant population has actually been shown to boost the economy. And the cost in running detention centres is a huge drain, both in terms of the mental trauma suffered by Australians who work within them, and the monetary cost of billions of dollars each year. But Australian detention centres are hugely economically beneficial for multinational corporations. You have your own experiences with this in England, Russell. Serco, who run 12 of our detention centres, including the Villawood Detention Centre in Sydney, also saved a million dollars in a private jail they were running in Doncaster, England, by putting beds in the toilets. And there was also the case in the UK of a 14-year-old boy in a Serco juvenile detention centre who hung himself after being assaulted by Serco-trained guards. Despite profit warnings everywhere else, Serco is propping itself up with profits made from Australian detention centres. So, sorry Russell, sorry England, but your problems are kind of our problems too. Oh yeah, and we're thinking of asking Serco to start running private jails in New South Wales because, you know, they did such a great job in the mother country. Companies like Serco, such as Transfield, that run the concentration camp on Manus Island, are out to make money from governments by locking people up. And locking people up is a profitable business. Australia is predicted to spend over $2 billion on Manus Island and Nauru alone. It can be easy to forget that the policy of locking up asylum seekers who arrive by boat is relatively new in Australia. It's only been mandatory since 1992. The rise of the contracted companies in the, that imprison asylum seekers has been accompanied by a new vocabulary surrounding refugees in Australia. Well, you may laugh at the description of asylum seekers as customers, Russell, but as your compatriot George Orwell once wrote, political language is designed to make lies sound truthful and murder respectable, 
and to give an appearance of solidity to pure wind. The camp on Manus Island where the asylum seekers do not have access to clean water and live in tents is a processing facility. Officer, why don't answer? Today we, today we don't have a water. Today we don't have a water, officer. In detention, prison guards are officers and employees. Asylum seekers are clients. A peaceful hunger strike is a riot. Suicides and self-harm are media stunts. As I said at the beginning of this video, I've been living outside of Australia now for two years. But while I've been studying, travelling and teaching in France, England and now Chile, many of my friends are still there, in detention. Rasa, a quiet middle-aged Sri Lankan man who is an excellent cook, Ranjini and her children, the youngest of whom was born last year in detention, they are still there, still waiting. And then there are those who are no longer in detention. Shuti killed himself in Villawood. Reza Bharati was murdered on Manus Island. Martin in Darwin is now on hunger strike and close to death. Two weeks ago I saw video footage of a protest in New York slamming Australia's treatment of refugees. Today there's a group of us gathering to express our solidarity with people who are in immigration detention in Australia and in particular those people who are on Manus Island who are protesting against their indefinite detention. So I started a Facebook group. As it turns out, Australians and their friends in New York weren't the only ones protesting outside of Australia, or the only ones ready to. The protest you saw in London is one of a wave of international demonstrations held in New York, Cambridge, Leeds, Brussels, Berlin, San Francisco, Boston, Santiago, Chile and The Hague, with more planned. We are now active in 16 cities across four continents. We are Australians and allies overseas against mandatory detention. We need your help to get the word out. It's not just about Australia. Serco already runs many of your private prisons and youth detention facilities. G4S, that had the contract on Manus Island when Rosa Barati was killed, is in charge of housing refugees in England. They are powerful, ruthless companies, and as I've said, locking people up is a profitable business. It's a short step and a jump if your government decides to go the same way as Australia. Join us, Russell.